God bless you and thank you for joining us again today. Our uh, um, study um, title is called The Cost of Sh Social Media and Digital Devices, uh, Part 2. And the text was study taken from the book of Exodus, um, chapter 20, 1 to 3. So I'm just going to read that. Uh, th then God gave, this, gave his people these instructions. I'm the Lord your God who rescued you from the land of Egypt, the place of your bondage, the place of your slavery. You must have no other gods before me. You must not have any other god but me. So that's the test for our message. Uh, in today's world, our digital uh, devices and social media has become, as we know, very important in our life, as we use it for online banking, shopping, um, to emails, um, education, pleasure, and it's a business tool. And the rise of social media and, and digital devices has uh, meant that people are more connected than ever before. But we also have to understand that too much reliance, reliance on social media and our di digital devices can also have a detrimental effect uh, on our mental, physical, social and spiritual health. Now previously in the part one of the message we looked at the, the blessings of social media and our digital devices which uh, where the benefits of being staying connected with family, getting connected with family uh, all over the world, uniting families together, um, the benefit of meeting online um, with church members, work colleagues, uh, the benefits of information and research, uh, online learning, uh, online banking and shopping, the benefits of entertainment on your phone, uh, employment, uh, and a great marketing tool, great marketing tool for body sacred and secular institutions. But um, we're going to look at the spiritual downside of our devices and social media. So what, what are these causes of social media and digital devices? Number one, it will steal our valuable time. Our digital devices and social media visits has become one of the main source of time wasting. You know, um, and, and, and this include, uh, and talking about dig digital devices, I want to include our desktop computer, our laptops, iPads, smartphones, um, video game consoles and TV. Okay, uh, you know, research says an average person spends 3.4 hours a day on their phone. Uh, research also says the average Britain will spend 10 years of their life watching TV. Uh, that, that you get that's from the Independent, uh, May 24, 2018. Also, uh, the Times, uh, August um, 2020 says. A typical Briton spends six hours, 25 minutes watching TV or online and online videos. Okay, and, and this is a writer called Andrani Matel uh, uh, Matai uh, spends two hours and 20 minutes a day on her phone, which might seem fine until you realize it amounts to 35 full days a year. What's your own number? How much time do you spend? on your phone, your gadgets. Research also says that uh, those who spend too much time on screen, uh, just sitting in one place, maybe watching TV, sitting in one, uh, um, you know, accessing your, your smartphone without frequent activity, are likely to suffer from heart disease, obesity, sleeping problems, back and neck issues, because you're always your neck down on your phone, so therefore, we need to be aware that too much time on these things, you know, waste of valuable time can affect our health, physical health as well. Like we uh, sp uh, spoke earlier, um, uh, obesity, not being able to sleep well, you know. Um, you know, they waste that time that we cannot get back. Wasted time cannot be gotten back. So we need to take stock on how we spend our time every day to prevent ourselves from wasting our God-given opportunities and time. You know, Ephesians 5, 16 to 7 talks about redeeming the time for the days are evil. He said, make the most of every opportunity. We need to redeem the time. And we should uh, not be foolish in understanding what the will of God is. So don't act thoughtlessly, but understanding what the, the, the Lord wants you to do. So one, it will waste our time. Two, it will distract us from quality time with God. You know, Satan has succeeded. Um, using social media and digital devices not only to steal away our time but to distract us from the most important things in life. John 10:10, 10, 10, the enemy comes to steal and to kill and to 
uh, destroyed. Not that these things are even itself, but they are a form of uh, their means through which you know um, we are enticed away from God. It is the bait that is used to entice away from God. Our digital devices, social media, can be a god, and that ends the um, the, t- the text for our message, the, bib- the biblical verse for our message. Do not have other gods before me. We can make additional devices actually a God that distracts us away from God. And again, as the Bible says in the Hosea, uh, Hosea chapter 7, verse 9, New King James Version says, Strangers have devoured his strength and he knoweth it not. Yea, gray hairs are here and there upon him, yet he knoweth it not. And if you look at the New Living Translation, it says, Worshipping foreign, foreign gods, foreign gods as sapped their strength. That is, uh, time on these things devours our strength, drains us of our strength, that we don't have time with God. Okay? So Jesus wants us from being distracted. Um, uh, in Luke 10, chapter 10, 38 to 42, we read the story of Miriam Martha. And verse 10 said, Jesus and the disciples continued their way to Jerusalem. They came to a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. Our, our sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he taught. But Martha was distracted, you know, by, by, uh, you know, by many things, by the big dinner she was preparing. So she came to Jesus and said, Lord, does it seem unfair to you that my sister just sit here while I do all the work? Tell her to come and help me. But the Lord said to her, my dear Martha, you are worried also about, over all these details, over so many things. The only thing which is worthy, which is much important, which is needful, Mary has discovered it. And it will not be taken away from her. So Jesus rebuked Martha, even though she wasn't doing a bad thing. And, uh, and like I said earlier, there's this good side of the social media and artificial devices. But if they begin to take God's place in our life, they become a bad, it becomes an idol. Uh, and distracts us from really hearing from God when you always your phone is always doing a lot notifications blings bling you know you can't really hear from God and yet to hear from God you need to be you need to be aware, aware you need to shut the door you need to be still you know and know that I'm God Psalm 46 verse 10 says be still and know that I'm God no matter you're not hearing from God because your mind is so preoccupied with stuff that's gone all around you so it will waste our time uh, the cost of social media and digital device waste our time. It will distract us uh, uh, from quality time with God. And also it will distract, distract us from our work and hobbies. You know, social media and digital devices can lead to poor grades, you know, and work performance due to excessive use of social media during work or during times of study. I can use myself and experience um, uh, in Nigeria when um, um, they started the 24-hour TV, movie TV, I, I think it was ITV weekend, uh, 24 hour movie weekend. And, you know, I love watching um, uh, martial arts films, kung fu films. And I was talking this of me preparing for my, my GCE. I was busy watching movies. Then we don't have phones, you know, which is our TV. And then electricity was frequent. I ended up failing my um, GCE. I, need to, I needed to repeat. And that, that's the danger of these things, especially among the youths, among the young ones. Again, even among adults as well. The Bible says, you know, as a research tells us in the United States that some 75% of employees in the U.S. attributed their lack of focus at work to digital notifications. Um, and also uh, certain notifications from and, uh, and the presence of social media uh, to be the biggest distraction blurring the line between work and personal life. And this is branded research, uh, 2018, Tech Republic, November 2018. So it will distract you from spending time on your hobbies as well. Apart from work and study from your hobbies, maybe hobbies like, okay, you, you enjoy cooking, baking, um, outdoor activities, you, you don't act up, many people today, especially during this COVID pandemic, during the lockdown, a lot of people are stuck at home, you know, so uh, people are stuck indoors now, people don't even go out because they are playing video games, you don't go to exercise, people, and, uh, and that's how people de- develop obesity, because they're not running, they're not exercising, they go fat, you know, um, you're not, um, uh, they're not practicing, uh, maybe learning an instrument and so forth, improving yourself, so those are, you know, st- you know, one of the disadvantages of um, or causes of social media and our digital devices. 
And when we continue that path, our life becomes unproductive, unsatisfied, because those things can never satisfy us anyway. We become unsuccessful in life. And no one gets a, qualif- no one gets a qualification to get a job by spending so much time on social media. Uh, and the Bible says in, in Proverbs 12, verse 11, New King James Version, He that tilleth his land shall be satisfied, um, but he that fled vain persons is void of understanding. That is, most of these things are vain. That they, you know, they are not important. They can be taken away from us. Like Jesus said to Martha, you are worried about things that, are, that don't have eternal significance. We need to focus more on that which is uh, true, which is the word of God. We need to do things that will be productive in our life. We need to be disciplined. So, you know, not only does it affect our work and, and, and hobbies, it also affects our relationships at home. You know, um, meaningful conversations, for example, between family members um, and friends can be interfered with uh, because one who you are, uh, you are speaking to is busy scrolling uh, on, um, uh, on, on, on uh, through Facebook on their phone or Instagram where you are talking or watching or busy watching TV. You know, you are trying to get something across, but they are saying gross in what they are doing. And, um, and this sometimes, as you know, can lead to friction at home between husband and wife or, or you know, um, or members of the family because, you know, they are not listening to what you are saying. And uh, this is becoming a norm in families. Even, um, even sitting at meal times, you know, everybody is with his gadget. And, um, and we're not doing things that are productive. We're talking about family issues, you know, um, to build up the family or improve family life. In fact, you know, the Lord said in Deuteronomy uh, chapter 6 about making use of our time together. Deuteronomy 6 uh, 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 from verse 4. Listen, O Lord, uh, Israel, the Lord your God is one God, and you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And you must commit yourself wholeheartedly to these commands that I'm giving you today. Repeat them again and again to your children. Talk about them when you're at home, when you are on the road, when you are going to bed, and when you are getting up. That is, we need to involve God. And not just when you go to church, you don't have to wait to go to church before you meet with God or speak to God. God can meet with us at home, meet with us on, on our dining table. We can have fellowship, you know. You can talk about God. In my family life, sometimes we talk about God. Um, when we sit at the table, ask my children what they've read today, how it means that to them. Yeah, because God can bless us. For example, in Jeremiah 35, we read a story of a family called the Rechabites. And God told Jeremiah, invite this family to the temple and give them a drink, give them a drink of wine. And, um, but the family refused that their fathers, forefathers said they are not allowed to drink. And, and God was impressed because for generations they've obeyed their father, what their father told them. And God was rebuking his people, Israel, that if this family can obey their father that is past gone, how much more me, your heavenly father. And God gave them a blessing to Jeremiah. And also the loss of as well, they were having supper and they blessed the meal or even um, the story of the two men who were uh, going on the road to Emmanuel and they invited Jesus and not knowing he was Jesus and uh, he blessed the blessed. So we can have meal, so we can have fellowship you can, in the kitchen, in the living room, in the sitting room. That's what starts from talking about God because God is everywhere. Because the Bible says God is spirit and he that must worship God must worship God in spirit and truth. God is not confined to a place, he's not confined to a camp, he's not confined to a, a man, you know. Um, um, we are to worship God and he alone is our Father. And also, uh, another um, cause or uh, disadvantage of the of social media and digital devices is that it can conform us to the world value system, the ungodly uh, value systems. The Bible says that Satan is the god of this world. is also the god influencing social media and entertainment industry. Efficient, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6. The Bible says he is the prince of the air, walking behind the spirit of disobedience. In Roman, John 16 11 says he is the ruler of this world. 1 John 5 19 says the, the, the whole world is under the sway of the enemy. So we need to be selective in um, what we read, listen, or view on social media or in the, in the entertainment industry, which is under the influence of the evil one. You know, because if we don't, we are going to be gradually seduced to the world value systems. Because you become what you focus on. If you keep on looking at something all the time, you know, like um, surfing the net and looking at some ungodly stuff, ungodly um, 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 music, ungodly videos, you know, ungodly um, 
um, lifestyle, then you begin to 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 um, behave like them. Your your spiritual senses is, becomes numbed, you know, numbed, and you begin to think, talk, and feel like the world, you know, um, and and. Um, and, then, and that's the goal of the spirit of this age, the spirit of Antichrist. Second Thessalonians, Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 7 says, the spirit of Antichrist is at work in, in our age today. And what, what are they doing? Through these platforms of entertainment industry and social media, they seek to create a discontent in society, okay? They, 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 which leads to covetous people. They make us discontent. How? They tell us what we have is not good enough, that you need to upgrade, you need to buy more stuff. They, they, they tell us how, what we should buy, how we should dress, you know, what clothing or shoes are in fashion, what you need to do to make you look cool, to have the right body or the right, right shape. Uh, and so the word is constantly teaching us that if we don't have these things, we're not going to be happy, we don't have any, we're going to have no value. But that's the life of the peace of hell. Amen. The Bible says we are fearful and wonderful made. We are accepted in Christ. We are loved by Christ. Amen. So that so the aim of the spirit of the Antichrist is to create discontent in society. And that's why people can be greedy, they become vicious. You know, they are, people are driven to make more money, to improve their status, their position, acquire more possessions, acquire more goods, and thereby fall into debts. And then because we are so busy seeking uh, material um, um, wealth and possessions, we are distracted from the most important thing in our life, which is God. And also, and not, not only does it create discontent in us, uh, among people, it, it creates a sexually obsessed society, a sexually obsessed society. Social media and, and the entertainment industry has become the main source of creating a sexual obsessed society. Psalm 101 verse 3 said, I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. You know, the entertainment industry, especially in the West, is full of, um, uh, almost, I would say 80 to 90% is full of sexual ex explicit um, uh, content and sexual perversions. Uh, you say, well, um, well, it's, it's up to me what I watch. But the point is, this creates in a society of faithful men and faithful, faithful women. It creates um, sexual perversion and immorality, sexual abuse, abuse sexual traffic, sex trafficking. Uh, it promotes sexual transmitted disease, uh, creates uh, uh, abortions. And the Bible says God is against this system. God is going to judge and this culture, cultural value systems. God is going to judge those people who are pressing these lifestyles. And we need to want the people. And as a church, we need to stand up against these ungodly lifestyles. We need to stand up and not conform and compromise. Hebrews 13, first verse says, Fornicators and adulterers, God will judge. So let us not be deceived. Let us not be deceived. And also, the social media uh, and, um, uh, 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 also creates a society of uh, it's creating a society controlled by fake news, you know, uh, uh, and we know the spirit behind it, the spirit of the evil one, Satan, he is the god of lies, he is the father of lies, and, I, and, and we all have been influenced by fake news, you know, uh, on social media or through um, uh, news media. You know, and the Bible wants us not to believe everything we hear. Proverbs 14, 15 says, Only simpletons believe everything they are told. The prudent carefully considers their steps. And I've been guilty of that. You know, like, um, I get a message in WhatsApp and I forward it, not really investigating properly, you know, if this is true or not. But I learned my lesson. Le lesson. Uh, and that's because when we do that without thinking, we are circulating rumors and circulating lies. And that's why the Bible tells us in Exodus 23, verse 1, you must not pass along false rumors. You must not cooperate with evil people by lying on the witness stand. Proverbs 17, 4 says, wrongdoers eagerly listen to gossip. Liars pay close attention to slander. If we, if we follow these things, we, we are called liars, paying close, close attention to slander. And also Ephesians um, um, chapter 4, 25 also says, so stop telling lies. Let, let us tell our neighbors the truth. Let everyone speak truth to his neighbor. Because, you know, when we tell lies, it's the same thing as sending lies, posting lies, sharing lies, retweeting lies. So we need to be careful of those things. You know, we need to show caution before we press the send button. We need to be selective when we listen 
what we watch, you know, uh, what we view. So, so it's either we are focusing on those things or focusing on God. So we are to learn to focus on God instead of on our lives to be uh, um, um, controlled by what is said in face, instead of putting our face in the book of, of life. The Bible says, do not copy this falling world. Why? Because this falling world is full of um, 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 the loss of the eyes, the loss of the flesh, and the pride of life. Say, for the world offers only a craving for physical pleasure, a craving for everything we see, a pride in our achievements and possessions. These are not from the Father, but from this world. Okay? So we are to focus on the Word of God. You know, we are to focus on Jesus. We are to renew our mind with the Word of God. Romans 12, 2 says, do not copy this world. That's what the Bible says. It says, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. That is the renewing of your mind. So you know what, what is God's will for you, what is God's perfect will, acceptable will, that which is pleasing to Him. So the more we focus on God, the more we read the Word of God, the more we expose ourselves to uh, the presence of God, the more we are conformed to Christ, the more we are transformed into Jesus. That's what the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, 18. New King James Version says, um, but we all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord have been transformed, you know, uh, into the same image from glory to glory, just as the Spirit of the Lord. So what we focus on, we're transformed. We are transformed into the image. So if all our life, all your, 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 your uh, hours of your day, you have uh, focused on godly content, whether you like it or not, you're going to be transformed. You're going to start thinking and behaving and feeling that way. But when we, when we spend time in the Lord and we don't make these things our God, we make God our God, we make time, quality time for God, we're going to be transformed into the image of God. It is the power of the Word of God as we expose ourselves to that makes us more and more like Jesus. Uh, in Jesus' name. So I hope you're blessed. We, we um, continue um, next time on, this, uh, on the other disadvantages or causes of social media and digital devices. So I hope you know Jesus Christ. I hope you give your life to Christ. I hope you are born again. And if you are not, you know, and if God is speaking to you, that you need to make a turning point in your life, now is the time. And I can join you in prayer in receiving Jesus in becoming a new person today because the only way you can exercise self-control and be victorious in this life is having Jesus live in you. But for Jesus to come into you, you need to be willing to turn your back on this world to repair of your sin. And if you're willing to do that, why don't you pray this prayer with me? Say, Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross. I believe that he died for my sins. I believe that he rose again on the third day. I accept him into my life. I confess him as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Father, for making me your child today. And he helped me to live all the day of my life for your glory. Amen. Amen. If you said that prayer, yes, God bless you and welcome into the family of God. And now you need to grow and build up in your faith. And how do you do that? If you don't have a Bible, get a Bible and start reading the Word of God. The Word of God is God's letter, love letter to you. It shows you what um, God has done for you and um, what God, how God wants you to live and, the, and what he's promised to do for you. And then, you know, attend uh, a, a church, attend a, um, a Bible-believing church regularly. Uh, um, and, if you, and, maybe, and if you're not in the right church, pray that God will lead you to the right place, and he will, because he loves you. So God bless you for watching, and if you're a Christian, I hope this helps you. Uh, and we're going to pray that God will give us uh, self-control and the wisdom to live a balanced life in Jesus' name. And again, I uh, just want to encourage you to share this message so, so others can be blessed. And if you miss any of our messages, you can always watch it online at our YouTube channel. 
um, Noasak, at Noasak Sanctuary Church and yeah, do subscribe so whenever a, a message is um, uh, posted you will be first one to um, know. So God bless you. Please remember uh, remember in your prayers and I hope you have a blessed um, week in Jesus' mighty name. God bless and stay safe.